Hello, friends. Today's episode is brought to you by From Within Records. If you're not subscribed to the From Within Records podcast, please go boot up your Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, and please click that subscribe button. They just dropped episode 30. It's a great podcast, so please support what they're doing over there. With that, if you're not following From Within Records on social media, please go boot up X, go boot up Instagram, click that follow button to stay up to date on all the current news. And like I always say, please support From Within Records because they support us. If you're looking for high quality merch for your band or for your business, please hit up my friends over at Good Fortune Printing out of Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. You can follow them on Instagram at Good Fortune Printing, or if you want to get in contact with them, please email them contact at goodfortuneprinting.com. You can thank me later. Before we get into today's guests, I got a special package. Let me show you from our good friends over from the band OK Buddy. And this was actually printed by uh, Good Fortune Printing. So uh, this is how I stumbled across it. Um, but here's here's the front. OK, buddy, shout out to Lehigh Valley. The OK, buddy on the front and then on the back. We got some lyrics and I am so excited to, to own this because I'm a huge fan of OK, buddy, but also uh, it's always great to support good fortune, even though, you know, we rep them every episode super hard, but it's cool to uh, be able to get new merch from them and shout out okay buddy for for hooking me up with the the strays tape which oh, let me get the glare out of there I, I can add this cool tape to my collection i really appreciate the personalized note the sticker oh man I, I'm, I'm so jazzed to to have this stuff so oh let me show you the back so, so you can see the actual tape look at that that is that is so cool I'm, I'm so so happy to to own this if you have not listened to my episode with lucas from okay buddy please go check it out go stream strays go listen to everything okay buddy has put out because they're an awesome band and i just had to shout them out because i appreciate nice care package so shout out to my friends out there in the lehigh valley Moving on to some of your favorite topics, uh, K-pop. This is just going to be an insane year for K-pop because we can walk away from 2024 knowing that we saw my top three K-pop groups of all time, right? Starting with Twice back in March uh, in Las Vegas and then coming up uh, next month, at the crypto arena and the convention center we're going to see stacy and end of september we're going to be able to cap it off with finally seeing weekly on their first ever world tour which i was so stressed right almost like sick to my stomach like the night before thinking about everything that could go wrong <sighs> because th th this is being put on by a smaller promoter which I, I i totally support shout out studio pav um can't see it i i just noticed that all my um uh, lanyards fell so i'll have to figure out what happened to them but there is a brave girls lanyard somewhere down here and because i went to brave girls which was uh, i was tripping out too because brave girls was my second k-pop show ever right first k-pop show was twice which to this day is insane to me that i can uh, say that the first k-pop show that i ever got to see was twice i was front row you can go see some cool videos on my tiktok which i uh, haven't really posted any new k-pop stuff there but you can go see some insane videos of me at front row at twice when they played the forum so many years ago but because i went to brave girls right that's put on by studio pav back in 2022 uh, and i only know this because i, I uh, looked into like my studio pav account and I, I saw the the purchase date for my ticket but anyways i bought a vvip ticket to brave girls which i didn't even know granted me lifetime early access to every studio pav tour going forward which is awesome 
right? It's a nice way for them to give back to people who are supporting them by, you know, forking over, uh, you know, a, a pretty hefty amount um, in a ticket price. Uh, so I was stoked. I'm like, okay, because I bought Brave Girls two years ago, I'm seeing, I'm finally seeing the benefits of it because I have not gone to a Studio Pav show since Brave Girls, uh, but here we are. They've shown nothing but love over the past few years. So I am stoked to be able to go back to something that they're putting on. And I'm happy that they're finally bringing a group like Weekly to America. And not only to America, they're, they're going to Bogota. So shout out to all my homies in Bogota. Um, they're going to some pretty cool places. And th this was just something that I never, I, I honestly never thought it was going to happen. Because weekly hasn't had the most stable career right it was good from uh, their debut with tag me all the way up until uh, you know after school they were like the darlings of the k-pop industry and then um, it's, it's always going to be hard to follow up with like a smash hit like after school so they, they came out with like holiday party afterwards which was really good i i, I really like that record but I don't know whose idea it was to uh, to kind of uh, stop doing their like teen fresh style uh, and to try to go to like more girl crush. It, it was just really weird, right? Sonically, it just didn't make any sense. It was just it was just such a weird move because if you put uh, holiday party next to Vampara you wouldn't even know they're the same group. So, and it was a little weird too, because I remember the the buildup. Um, it, it was just, you know, they, they did this weird documentary and they try to build up, build out like this whole new universe and stuff. And it was a hard sell. I, I'm a huge, like weekly fan. And I was like, I don't know what they're doing with this, but I was going to ride with it. So, Venpara, not the best, but also not the worst, right? It, it, it's it's uh, okay, but it's just not weekly. I, I think that was the biggest thing was that, okay, like what we've been sold and what we know about this group over like the past couple of years, this is not it, right? And I think that they they definitely felt the repercussions of trying to change their sound. Um, and I, I, to this day, I would love to know why they were trying to go in that direction because they were killing it. Right. Like I said, from tag me, uh, it was like this gradual growth, right? They, they, they came out with zigzag, uh, and then after school and then to holiday party, it, they were on a cool trajectory. And I thought that they were going to be, uh, way more successful, but I, I honestly feel like because of that huge stumble with the uh, you know comeback with Venpara, that that I, I honestly that almost ended their career. Like the the amount of support that they've lost and like the momentum shift, it was very scary for a minute. Right, I'm uh, I was in a dark place, just wondering like. Because you got to think, right? I, I, I've only been into K-pop since 2024. Actually, not 2024. Uh, 2020. And now we're in 2024. And I haven't had to deal with too much heartbreak. Like, okay, like I've seen groups like Hot Issue, who I thought had a lot of potential, have to hang it up for whatever reason. I could deal with that because they're not, they're, they're not what I was listening to every day. They're, they're not my top three, right? But, uh, you know, just just trying to figure out how I was going to have to navigate through this, knowing that this group that I just absolutely love wasn't going to be around anymore was just a weird thought. Um, but luckily, after, you know, perseverance and just uh, not willing to uh, turn my back on them, even though so many people uh, did, it, it's cool to see them be able to to come back, right. To, to see the girls, uh, you know, compete on, uh, queendom puzzle and to, to just see them still have so much, uh, you know, love being thrown their way, especially with the latest comeback with, with the, the last single vroom vroom. It, it just shows that, okay. Like, I feel like they definitely heard the dissatisfaction and the criticism from, from everyone. And it seems like they're kind of slowly, 
going back to the sound that got them to where they were and especially with the the, the announcement of their new record coming out next month uh, titled bliss just with the the announcement of the whole like you know schedule leading up to the album coming out j- just the aesthetics it's like okay cool this seems like we're going back to you know what made weekly which which is really cool for me uh, and I, i'm just happy to see them doing good and see them getting love and i i just hope that they are able to kind of capture that uh you know that relevance again because i've loved everything that they've done like i said ben Parra wasn't the best but not the worst i, I can still listen to it but i know that there's such a deep well when it comes to talent when i look at that group uh like i honestly think like monday is probably like one of the best singers like just in the entire industry she could out sing a lot of groups uh so i'm I'm just happy that it's going down and it's happening at the teragram in la and the last time i was at the teragram was back in i want to say it was like 2015 it was power trip freedom fury and a couple other bands i can't remember the other bands but that was the last time i was at the telegram so it, it's going to be kind of cool to to step back in there and be like all right <laughs> we're here last for a, a really awesome hardcore show but now we're back for a very very exciting k-pop show because uh, i honestly didn't think this was going to happen in the states i th- honestly thought i was going to have to travel to korea to be able to see them because this is long overdue because for anyone who goes back in time and looks at like you know when weekly came out weekly debuted the same time as like stacy and espa and i'm not trying to compare all the groups but that's just kind of like you know the class that they're in uh espa stacy have blown up and I, that's where i thought like weekly would be in, in their careers but obviously they had um you know a couple setbacks not the best comeback with Vampara. They lost a member, uh, so they're, you know, once we're a seven member group, now they're down to a six member group. Um, so I just hope that they can, uh, you know, uh, get that level of recognition and uh, success because I, I, I think they deserve it and I'm riding till the wheels fall off. Right. Like I said, time and time again, number one daily, uh, and I, I just can't wait. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. If they play top secret, that's uh, my K-pop career could be complete, right? I could maybe walk away happy, <laughs> right? Because twice I, I, I've seen it all. Stacy, they're about to drop Metamorphic, and they're going to be playing the new single at KCON, which is going to be insane. Shout out to Stacy, and, and and it seems like they're going back, uh, you know, to some of the, like their older sounding stuff, which which is cool. Stacy has been flawless in the discography, but yeah, I'm just excited that I was able to successfully get the VVIP for weekly. So we'll be there for the fan chant, the high touch, all the bells and whistles, and it's just be totally worth it. Um, so I'm just excited and I'm happy that, that I got it. And one day I'll, I'll tell the story of how, I actually got the ticket, what was going on, because it, it was a pretty surreal and like divine moment, which sounds corny, whatever. But uh, I, the, the way it went down, like I could not have planned it any better, but I'm just happy that I was successful and we're here. So 2024. Twice Stacy Weekly, all in one year. It's going to be insane. But anyways, on today's episode, we had to track down our good friend, Zach Barone sings for an amazing band coming out of the pennsylvania hardcore scene sudden demise back in april they dropped their pahc demo 2024 out on rebirth records and like i said the episode i'm just drawn to that demo it it just it's just one of those hardcore records that like okay this this is literally right up my alley this this was I feel like this was like made for me. I I just love it and it resonates so much with me. Uh, Stand up and fight is still my favorite track to this day, and I cannot wait 
to see them live just because it's, it's just it's just really good music and, and everyone in the band is so talented shout out eric walk andrew accordingly and especially lennon for anyone who knows lennon he's just been just been a, a, a true gem for hardcore right he, he's had his hands in so many awesome things so it's cool to see him thriving and still doing cool stuff to this day but it was a real pleasure for me to be able to have zach back on the podcast to talk about sudden demise because i'm just such a fan and it was truly an honor to be able to hear about the band and i cannot wait to see what lies ahead for them i wish them great success and like i said i cannot wait to see them live and get to experience it so please if you're not familiar with sudden demise hit pause go boot up spotify apple music title Bandcamp, whatever and go listen to the phc demo 2024 it's awesome i i literally uh, cannot say enough good things about it but it's seriously a straight up real hardcore record so please strap in enjoy this conversation without further ado welcome zach barone to the show Welcome back to the podcast, Zach. How's it going? Good, Jamie. How are you? I, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm happy to have you back on the podcast. If I'm going to be honest, um, uh, you know, when like, you know, way back when I don't know how long it's been uh, since you came on the podcast, but remember you, you came on the podcast because you sang for another band, and then you left the band. And I was always just kind of curious. I was like, huh, I, I wonder where Zach's going to go if he's going to do any more music or if he's just going to, you know, stay, uh, you know, just going to shows, doing his thing. I, I was always curious, but I'm just very happy to have you back here uh, to talk about a new band that you're in. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, like when I was in Carry by Six, like I felt like I feel like we could have like done a, a lot more things, but it just I really wasn't feeling anymore. I, personally, in my own personal space, like I wasn't like real happy. Like uh, none none of the music was mine. It was all written for me, and like uh, between just like my personal life and the things going on, uh, you know, I just wasn't happy and if i'm not happy doing something i just can't do it like i can't i can't fake it i can't get up there on stage and like uh really just like the directions that things were going and like all those guys are my brothers in that band uh you know we we're kind of like just starting to maybe like get at each other a little bit too much because everybody like you know uh kyle wanted to do this and i wanted to do that and i'd much rather keep a friend and then lose a friend over a couple of tracks or, you know, like kind of uh, the direction of the band. So I was just like, you know what? I just need a break because, I mean, I, I'm always working around the clock. I'm always working two jobs. I just like staying busy. You know, there's people who see me on stage coming straight from work. I'm covered in concrete. And, like I'm still in my high vis. And I mean, I think the first time I met you, one of the first times I met you was uh, was I was, you know, Maybe Wilkes Bear. Yeah, the S W B. Yeah, I, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I, was, I I came right from work, hopped in my truck, you know, still in all my high vis, still in my work boots, and you know, just hanging out. But um, you know, it's just I needed a break for a little bit and figure things out. And I knew what I wanted to do. I just had to wait for the right time. You know, for sure. And it it, it takes a lot too, right? Because for uh, someone to you know work a full shift and then go straight to a show that that's dedication right because you know you're already exhausted you know uh, definitely physically and probably mentally too but to uh, you know to suck it up and still go and support that that definitely says a lot it shows that you actually care yeah i mean that's that's just what we do in philadelphia I and mean, joe and i i mean like there was like times when we were when uh we were working together and, you know, we were working like 
for instance, like uh, we were working at 22nd and Samson and we'd have to fucking leave straight to work. I'd go help them set up for the show. We'd set up. I'd run to my other job, turning wrenches on the truck shop after doing concrete, go to the show or, you know, go to the truck shop, fix a couple trucks, get done there, go back to the show, hang out, you know, catch a couple bands and then go home, try and get some sleep and do it all over again. And that's just, that's our mentality in Philadelphia. You know, it's just, we, we grind. It's an endless grind and hardcore. There's always time for hardcore, no matter what, you know? Yeah. And I, I feel like that's why, uh, you know, the, the, the scene is, uh, you know, so special out there, right? You got, uh, you know, Joe Hardcore has been putting work for, you know, a long time and, uh, Bob, uh, you know, constantly putting out like, you know, crazy shows and doing the label. So the, I, I, you know, definitely respect what you guys have going on out there. I'm definitely like a huge fan of a lot of the bands that are from there. So I, I definitely get it. You know, and I can tell that, uh, you know, that stuff is all that cool stuff is happening out there because of the hard work that everybody's putting in behind the scenes. Cause that stuff just doesn't happen without anybody doing the work. Yeah, it definitely doesn't. I mean, you know, we're just very fortunate to have like a very cohesive group of people. I can like just kind of make it happen. I mean, like Joe and Bob are really, uh, you know, they really, they've really pushed the scene to another level. But like, what a, people don't also see is, you know, the younger guys and girls that are doing the thing and are there supporting. And anytime Joe or Bob needs something, they're there in a heartbeat. So it's like, it's not necessarily just Joe. They're the main driving force behind it. But I mean all these younger guys that have come in, you know, guys and girls who've come in since COVID, you know, they've really picked up the slack and like, you know, found areas in which they can be involved in and really just kind of push things even further, which is incredible, you know? 100%. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been to some uh, Ben Stuckey shows. So it's always cool to see him put in work too. Yeah. I Stuckey. Stuckey's always doing awesome things for younger kids. And I mean, Anytime Stucky wants me to play a show, I always say, yeah, because it's, it's like a cool VFW hall or some, you know, West Kensington or somewhere. And, you know, his shows are generally always well attended. He's well respected. And, you know, he's he's really found a, a place in Philadelphia Hardcore. I mean, I, I remember the first time I saw Stucky, he was wearing cut off jean shorts with fishnets and like a tank top and we were all like, who is this kid? And he was in the pit moshing the whole entire time. You could tell he was having the time of his life. And none of us knew who he was, but he was like, yeah, he looks weird as hell, but he's having a blast. <laughs> and, you know, it's he's stuck around and he's like growing all of us and he's been become a very important part of the scene, you know? Yeah, I feel like when, when you see those new kids who you can tell like have that passion and are out there, you know, just showing up. I, I feel like those are the kind of people like you should like reach out to and just kind of be like, hey, like you know, like what's up, and try to make them feel welcome, you know, because I, I get it for like new people coming in, they might not feel welcome because they don't know anybody. But I feel like yeah. sometimes if you stick around long enough, like you're eventually gonna have to meet some people. Yeah, uh, like I think that's part of like like Bonks. Bonks has become such an important part of a lot of young kids uh, time in hardcore because they, that's like the place where a lot of young kids like from the suburbs and everything, they would drive an hour, just have their one older friend drive them an hour to bonks and see their first, you know, first couple hardcore shows. And it's like, you know, I worked the door there and like, you know, it's just important for these kids to feel welcome. And, uh, you know, I remember when I was, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old and I first started to go into shows, it was a totally different ball game. These guys were all animals. <laughs> they were grown men. And it was, you know, it probably scared away more people than than uh, than anything. But, you know, uh, I've been in their shoes and like I don't ever want them to feel that way. Like, I don't ever want them to be scared. I want them to be having the time of their life and I want them to feel what I felt, you know. Hundred percent. Yeah, you know, obviously, I, I follow you on social media, and you know, when I see you do posts talking about you know the scene or the state of hardcore down there, it always seems like you're doing it in a way to uh, you know be positive to try to you know drive the scene forward and you know encourage people. Yeah, I mean, 
like yeah because oftentimes like people tell me like i'm kind of intimidating which i could say like you know they either have seen videos of me or anything like that but like oftentimes people just come up to me and like you know you talk to me is like i'm just a regular person like everybody else you know i I just want to have a good time. That's why I've been involved in hardcore for so long is because I love it. I love meeting new people. I love seeing new bands. I love seeing old bands. And it's just like, it's such an important thing to me because we, we all have so much time invested in it. And I don't ever see myself leaving. Like, you know, I'm going to be almost 40 years old in September. Uh, and I'm not going anywhere. Like, I still feel like I'm 20 years old, you know? 100%. Yeah, no, I, I'm getting up there in age two. I'm turning uh, 36 in November, but I, yeah. I'm, I'm like, you know, uh, you know, past my, or I'm like, you know, mid thirties. And I was like, geez, I, I don't feel like it at all. And I'm always kind of uh, thinking about, man, when's, is there going to be like this, like, you know, moment where I, I finally feel old? Cause like, you know, I, most of my life i've been going to hardcore shows doing what i could to uh you know support and you know that's been like the main like focus in, in, in my life right it's always been there it's like this constant and um it's just crazy how sometimes i'll stop and like you think about how much i've experienced in hardcore uh, but it doesn't feel that long right like yeah here i am 35 but i definitely don't feel it yeah i i think just like i mean hardcore is a youth movement it always will be like, I think uh, the kids that are coming into hardcore now, the average age is a little bit older because I think like just the way everything is with social media, COVID hit, you know, there were kids that sat at home for almost three years and did nothing, mm -hmm. you know, schooled at home. And, you know, they saw all this stuff on the internet happening and uh, maybe they weren't at college and, or, you know, maybe they were at school, you know, at college and they were seen these local things pop up and they had the free time to go so maybe like maybe that's the driving force behind it but you know i do see like some older like you know to me getting into hardcore at 24 years old 25 years old is a little weird mm -hmm. but um you know we do have a lot of a lot of kids that are like 17 18 years old that are getting into hardcore and I, I generally see them as the ones that stick around the longest because it's, you know, it's, it, it becomes so embedded in you every weekend you're going into a show. Maybe, uh, you know, um, there's a girl, Nikki, you know, she was still in high school, the boy town girl who did the gridiron or, uh, who did the uh, pain clinic thing <laughs> during the weather for the school, uh, for the school news or whatever. Um, you know, she's doing a zine now and it's just like, I think these young kids are, they're already so invested in it. It's like, I don't think they're going anywhere. I don't think there's going to be a turnover. I think we're going to see these, these kids for a long time. Yeah. And, and that's awesome. But well, I, I want to bring it back to, to Bonks because Bonks is, is, is a bar. So I, I think it's cool that, you know, that they have the, the venue is, is that technically the back? Cause I've been there once. Uh, yeah. It's, it's the garage that they converted into like a small venue and bar. Yeah. And I, I think it's cool that they're you know willing to have, uh, you know, all ages there. Cause you know, go ahead. The thing. All right. So Tim, the owner, for some reason, he just recently changed it. He's only doing 21 and up shows now. Oh, wow. I'm Bob is doing a show for my birthday in September. Uh, that's, that's might be the last all ages show at box, but, uh, I'm going to put it out there. If you're under 21 and you want to go to a bonk show and I'm working, you're always welcome to come. Hardcore will always be an all ages thing. I don't give a fuck what Tim says. I'll sneak you in myself. So if you're a young kid and you're listening, if you travel to Philadelphia and you want to go to a show at Bonks. Just hit me up. I'll let you in. 
Okay, that's a that's a great statement because uh, yeah. my experience at Bonks, uh, I went to uh, Gridiron. It was their first time at, at, at Bonks, and I was like, I don't know if it's always this crazy, but this place is actually pretty cool. Cause I've seen like a lot of videos, and that was one thing that I wanted to experience while I was in town. And, so, and it just so happens that Gridiron was playing a show um, after it was like the Hardcore Pride weekend. So I was like, all right, I, I'm definitely going to this. Normally, I don't uh, like after shows or whatever because I'm tired, but I was like, this is going to be an experience. So I went, and it was definitely a, a, a cool time. It was great to experience uh you know gridiron in a place like that yeah i to me it's the perfect it's the perfect size venue for a hardcore show if if only 50 people show up it looks like you got a good crowd in there there's nowhere to hide um you know it's just it's real it's like it's like having a show in your parents garage you know mm. one car garage it's 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 going to be fun, but I mean, like, just recently that uh, the show with uh, Final Resting Place at Bonks, that was, that was probably one of the craziest shows that I've seen in a very, very long time. There was just nowhere to hide. People were going off, and you know, there was, like, maybe 80, 90 people there, maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, people went retarded for Haywire. It was just it's crazy. I, I think it's become, like, such an essential part of the Philly hardcore scene now of like this era that like it just can't go away. So, you know, it's, it's going to stick around. It's, it's just not going to go away. It's too important at this point. Well, yeah, and, and it's cool to have, uh, you know, more options to, to have shows at, right? Because sometimes, uh, you know, uh, you know, limited venues can cause problems, but it's cool to have a, a spot like that, especially a, a place that's, you know, so beloved and, you know, uh, you know, a, a nice size, too, for the venue. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because, I mean, like, uh, you know, places like, kind of come and go in Philly because, I mean, especially right now, there's so much music happening in philadelphia it doesn't matter like if it's like it, the indie scene or like every venue is booked up right now it seems and like um you know a lot of people are kind of hesitant of hardcore because of, like moshing and things getting broken and everything like that so we try and like all of us as a as a whole try and minimize that as much as possible say yo if you come to a, a show and you get into fights it's not welcome like you're you're just not welcome because it's just it's one less venue and it's a bad look on all, all of us if people think that we're just there to fucking just have a bad time or, or ruin a venue or whatever um so you know it's just it's it's good to have it but it's it's also like kind of tough like you know shows get booked up everywhere now so the more venues the better you know bob does a great job of, of finding on the wall places and everything so okay and i want to ask you about uh sudden demise earlier you mentioned uh you knew what you wanted like to do like for a new band I i'm just curious how did that all actually come together like did you have to wait till you were like mentally ready to be in a band again um i knew exactly what i wanted to do i love fast hardcore like as much as i love like tough guy hardcore that's you know you know like the lifelesses the final resting places the uh you know just all the tough guys my shit it's i i, I grew up listening to fast hardcore it's like you know one of my first cds that i owned was minor threat complete discography and it's like forever embedded in my head the first time i put that on and, you know, when Filler comes in and, you know, he, you hear the guitar strum and then you hear Ian's voice, it was just like the first 10 seconds of this is like, I just knew I was like, this is what I want the rest of my life. This is exactly what I'm feeling inside. So it's like when when I started Carry by Six it, and like, you know, we started writing music. I was like, this is cool. Uh, I'm into it, but it just I wasn't like, I couldn't be totally emotionally invested because it just like, it wasn't my style of hardcore. I love fast hardcore. And I knew like with my, my influences, just really fast down strumming, you know, um, kind of like just real simple, you know, three chord riffs. 
you know, just angry, aggressive vocals with, you know, some decent meaning to the lyrics and everything like that. So it was like, I kind of took what I've always been into as like one life through. Not necessarily their politics or anything like that. Like, that's all stupid shit. But like, just as far as like fast hardcore, you need a good drummer and you need guitar tone. And I mean, One Life Crew obviously has both of them. So it's just like, all right, I want to do like One Life Crew style riffs, but you know, chubby fresh fills on the drums and just like, but just kind of be straight up hardcore, not like some dark, weird, mysterious stuff. I just wanted to be straight up. So it's just like, in Philadelphia, it kind of sucks because everybody is in a band, mm-hmm. <laughs> multiple bands. So I'm like, fuck, like how, like, what am I going to do? Like, who am I going to find to do this band? And realistically, everybody was in everything. And uh, Bob kind of slowed down with off the tracks. And, you know, I, I, Eric and I always talked at shows and we always had kind of the same flavor of, uh, uh, you know, of, of what we liked in hardcore. And he wasn't really doing anything. And I liked his style. I was like, Eric, you want to write some riffs and fucking do a band? He's like, yeah, let's do it. He's like, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know, let's just do some OLC style stuff. Just fucking real fast, under two minute songs. And and then, you know, within the next day, he had five songs written and sent them all to me. And I was like, you want? I was like, so we had the riffs. And the only thing was just finding a drummer. And so we kind of waited a little bit. And he asked Lennon if he wanted to, if he wanted to do the drum parts for, for, uh, for Sudden Demise. And he was all about it. And, you know, he heard the riffs and he was really into it. And, uh, you know, they practiced literally twice, went into the studio, uh, Lennon recorded in one day and then or I think like I think he realistically did it in like three four hours max and then Eric came in the next day recorded guitars he blew that out um and like I kind of really wanted to take the time to write the lyrics because I'd never written lyrics before ever in my life like to actually put them to a song like I've written stuff but never actually got to demo them and like, you know, figure them out and put them to a song and, and make it work. And so this was my first time and it was just kind of, uh, took a little bit until I was totally satisfied. And once, once I was satisfied and he had them figured out, went into the studio, did the two songs in one day and then well, you know, my book blew out my voice because it's the first time I recorded in a while. And I kind of pushed my voice like a little bit harder than I did with Carrie by Six and tried like a few other things and came back and recorded the other two songs uh, the following week. And that was that. You know, we we put out three songs and we used one for uh, for a comp that we're going to put in on uh, Carter's From Within comp that he does. That was that. That's sudden demise. It's, you know, he played, what was their first show? First show, I'm drawing blanks right now. Um, it was you know, the, played our first show. Yeah, it was that uh, show with like Hangman, Crusher Soul. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You played that, and I was like, I was kind of worried about, like, because that's a, you know, Crusher Soul is fucking, and Hangman are all, big hitters and I was just happy to be back on stage and just, you know, uh, playing music that I had, uh, some say in and it was my lyrics and it felt really good. It felt genuine. And, uh, you know, I'm just stoked that fucking everybody likes it. And it's just, you know, it's real deal. Hardcore. It's Philly hardcore. And, uh, it's just one more band that's, that's able to get out there and, and play Philadelphia shows or, or New Jersey or whatever. And how did Andrew accordingly get in the mix? Andrew was like, we needed somebody to play. Well, it's like, realistically, we have, 
we technically have three bases now. We have Andrew Cordingly. I mean, like, why not have Andrew? He's he's like Andrew's the man. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he, the king of Boyer Town. Uh, you know, the king of Grandview Raceway. Um, you know, so it's like he's just an awesome guy. He always has always has an awesome attitude. He's very knowledgeable of hardcore, and he's just a great guy to have around. And Eric wanted him to play, and I was like, yeah. So it's like we have three bases. We have Andrew Cordingly. Uh, my our our first choice was Chuck from from Foreign Hands. He he really wanted to do it, but you know Foreign Hands is kind of taking off right mm-hmm. now. Yeah, just put out that new record. Tour. Yeah, yeah, they're they're on tour. They're killing it. So it's like it kind of sucks because I really wanted Chucky to be on on stage with us, but you know he's doing his thing. So he's gonna he's gonna fill in when he can because Andrew, you know, he's busy doing union stuff now. Mm-hmm. He's a union electrician apprentice. Um, uh, so if Chuck can't do it, we're going to have Ben Stucky do it. So oh, okay. All, so three key guys in, in Philadelphia. So it's, you know, there's no shortage of, of people who can fill in. But, I mean, I think we're pretty good for bases. So that's how it kind of all worked out. We just wanted Andrew to do it because it would be awesome to have him in the band again. And... uh you know, just awesome dude. Yeah, you know, wh- when I first found out about uh, Sudden Demise, it was uh, because, uh, you know, Rebirth posted it, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always interested in whatever Rebirth is doing, because I feel like Bob is uh, just a really, you know, good streak when it comes to putting out bands. Um, and when he uh, posted the this Instagram post, and, you know, it said, OLC, sick of it all, and, uh, you know, PAHC, I was like, okay, cool. I was like, I love sick of it all so that just had me curious and then demo drops listen to it i'm like wow this is like i wasn't asking for this but this is definitely what i needed and i still uh, you know didn't even know who's in the band and it wasn't until i was going through you know just watching random instagram stories and i saw you post about it i was like okay that's crazy um now at least i know one member in the band uh, and then it was just cool to kind of just uh, you know figure it out I was like oh it's like i know everybody in the band uh, and, and it made and it made sense I'm like okay, this is why it's like quality music because of the people who's in it because they know what they're doing. So it, it was just like kind of like just this unexpected thing for me because uh, I, I didn't even know that you guys were doing anything new. So just to kind of stumble upon it, it, it was just great. And with like all the awesome music that has come out this year, I just feel like I'm always just drawn back to that demo. Like it, I, I just like listen to it. And I'm just like, wow, this just like everything about it. It's like it, it flows nice and uh, just that style of hardcore because like, you know, I enjoy all the subgenres of, of hardcore, but I feel like when I listen to Sudden Demise, I'm like, hey, this is like, you know, this is what I love. Just like straight up, you know, no frills, nothing too extra. This this is just like, you know, straight up real hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what we were shooting for. And it's like, uh, like the coolest part for me in, is having Lennon in the band. Lennon is, I didn't really know him all that well prior to uh, Sudden Demise. Like we hung out, you know, we would say hi at shows. We'd, small talk and everything and like getting in the studio with them and like, uh, you know, getting to know each other. It's, and like just talking to music is to me, he might be like one of the top guys in hardcore right, right now, just writing stuff. Like, I mean, he can play any instrument. Mm-hmm. He just, he knows all the formulas to every style of hardcore. I mean, like you go through all the bands that he's involved in, and he's had his hand in writing pretty much all of it. Um, he just, he knows exactly like art right, for like, say you want to do like this style of hardcore. Like he just knows how to put it all together and make it flow. And he's just really good to work with, especially a person who's never really been involved in bands. He just like, he knows how to talk to you and tell you how to do it. Or like maybe like uh, kind of suggest a different way to do something. And, it's been great having him in the band and working with him and he's just an awesome dude as well. So it's, you know, to me, it was just, it was real lucky to have it happen. And it was just like, it just all worked. And he, he, he was really a big, a big piece of making it all come together. Cause he's just so fucking good. Eric's all right too. <laughs> Eric's all right. Eric's all right. But, but yeah, yeah. Lennon, I, I feel is like a, 
just uh, yeah he's just like a master of like the craft because uh, you know even just like following uh, you know what he did in South Florida, and then when I figured um, out that he was moving to Philly, I was like, okay, cool. Like he's gonna uh, move to Philly, where there's it's like a you know like a hotbed of music and musicians. I, I wonder what's gonna like come from it. And then I remember when like Carbonite came out, and I was like, okay, this is like the start. Like he's gonna have his hand in some pretty awesome music. I'm just looking forward to seeing it all play out eventually. And once again, here's another band that he's in this that, that, that's awesome. I, I feel like, yeah, like anything that he's a part of is just, it's, it's always good. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy because like in pure Philadelphia fashion is like a lot of the people in the Philadelphia hardcore scene are not from Philadelphia. And that's how it's always kind of been other than like, you know, uh, say the last real band, like it would I guess it'd have to be like horror show horror show like all those guys they were all from actually from philly um you know punishment they were pretty much all i mean maybe two of them weren't from philly but i mean like you know punishment was from philly um so it's just like we somehow magically absorb all these amazing musicians who are just like really driven to to write music and always like kind of push themselves to make something new or, you know, just make something sound cool. So it's, it's cool having absorbed all these people, you know, like, uh, Tyler, Lennon, we've absorbed pretty much all the Florida guys, you know, mm-hmm. Fredo. It, it's really cool to see. And it's like, they all come and hang out and have a good time and they've, all being very enjoyable to be around and like and get to know them so it's just it's really cool we have such cool shit going on here it's it's really awesome and going back to the demo I, i'm curious who did you guys record with we recorded with wyatt that was like uh was like, i think we're the second second to last recording that he like really said he was gonna do like um yeah, he was just kind of just over it, whatever. You know, he's going through his things, and we recorded with Wyatt, and he didn't know what what we were gonna do. And once once he heard it, I think he was really stoked on it because he is, you know, if you if you've ever listened to uh, any of the bands at Wyatt over Alters, and he, they're all fast hardcore bands, you know, kind of mm-hmm. AN inspired bands. Um, so once he heard it, he was like, yes, I'm, I'm into this. So he, as, as pretty, like all his recordings that I've done with him have exceeded my expectations, but he threw like a little, like a little spice on this one. And it kind of, I never expected the demo to sound like that good. I, I, like I hate even calling it a demo because it just doesn't even sound like a demo. Yeah, because it, it, yeah, it doesn't sound like you know, rough or anything. It just sounds like it was done just right. Yeah. So, yeah. And who decided to call it the, uh, you know, PAHC demo instead of just demo? I think uh, just, you know, and I didn't want to call it Philadelphia Hardcore because it's just like, to me, right now, Pennsylvania, I like Philadelphia Hardcore is a thriving scene, but. And, and it is the biggest scene in Pennsylvania, but everything's popping off in every single corner of Pennsylvania right now. Like, you know, they have everything going on in Pittsburgh right now. Uh, you know, you have Last Ride and uh, Fire in the Blood and Altoona. They're still doing shows. You know, Nipa's still doing shows. And, you know, everybody comes out and does everything. Everybody supports each other. So it was like, I didn't want to, you know, Philly hardcore 2024 demo. Cause like to me, Pennsylvania hardcore is such an important thing, especially, you know, being close friends with, with Richie, Mm -hmm. you know, I want it to be about Pennsylvania, you know, just not, not Philly, Pennsylvania, because I've been influenced by, by everybody in Pennsylvania. 100%. 100%. No, the, I, I, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Cause you could have, uh, you know, easily called it Philly, but it's cool that you wanted to, you know, kind of put on for like the entire area. Yeah. Cause I mean, everybody puts on for us. Like 
you know, all the Pittsburgh guys, they all put on Altoona, you know, Central PA, they put on Northeastern Pennsylvania. It's just everybody's collectively as a whole is really doing their thing. And it's, I think it's so sick and I'm lucky to be part of Pennsylvania hardcore because of it. So it's just, you know, we're, we're all Pennsylvania. There is no just Philly anymore. It's, it's Pennsylvania. And I'm curious, uh, how did you guys land with wanting to put the record out with Rebirth? I don't know. I think uh, I just kind of like I didn't have any plans for anybody to put it out. Like I didn't tell anybody. Like I think Eric told Bob, and he was like, "Oh, sh- sick, you know." And then uh, once the songs were recorded, he let him hear it. And like I didn't even know like. Bob really wanted anything to do with it. Like, I just like didn't have any like high expectations. Like I didn't want to fucking, I didn't expect this to get put to like, straight to cassette or vinyl or anything like that. I was just going to kind of put it out there in the ether and just, if people were going to enjoy it, they were going to enjoy it. If they didn't, they didn't. And there was really no expectations. Like, honestly, this is just for me. So, uh, you know, it, to have Bob co-sign it means a lot. And like, you know, to, for him to put his money out there to fucking, you know, just even put it out on cassette, it meant a lot to me. So, um, you know, that's just kind of how it works. It's just Eric sent it to him. He's like, this is sick. It's fast hardcore. You know, Bob, Bob really loves that type of shit. So he was into it. Yeah. And I, I think it's a good fit too. So I'm, I'm happy that you guys, you know, were able to, you know, work with uh, Bob and Rebirth and put it out through them. And do you know who did the artwork for the demo? Well, it, we were, um, a couple of people were supposed to do the artwork and it, it was just like, uh, we were kind of like on a crunch for when Bob wanted to have it put out or, or whatever. So Lennon also being the wizard that he is just kind of whipped something together and that was that that's that's all Lennon's work <laughs> the artwork for, for the demo and it's like uh the tapes are like something got messed up with the tapes the guy screwed up or I don't know but uh they're still not they're still not in Bob's hands yet so I personally haven't even seen a cassette or like I, I'm I'm guessing it's still gonna be Lennon's art on on the J card for the cassette uh-huh. so I don't know but Lennon again just coming to putting his, sprinkling his magic on on the artwork for sudden demise as well wow that's awesome i, I yeah i literally had no idea that, that it was him behind that but yeah lennon yeah. Uh, yeah, what is there out there that he can't do i'm curious i'm i'm, I'm hopefully i'll find out because i i'm gonna find something he can't do <laughs> lennon i'm coming for you guys i'm gonna be able to do it you're not gonna okay and uh, your, your your first show, uh, I watched the live set. Uh, shout out to uh, Jeff from Feet First. He he filmed it, and I've been in that venue before. Cool spot. Uh, and I, I'm just curious what it was like for you because you know first show, new band. Like w- w- what was going through your mind? Um, I was a little nervous. Like I don't, I don't, I don't get nervous until until it, it hits because we. As a band, only practice once. We ran through the songs twice, and you know, and I I know all the, all the lyrics. They're all memorized, and it's not hard to figure out. It was just like trying to, it's like all right, it's time to play. How tired am I going to be? Because I had never performed, you know, performing live in front of people and trying to keep your energy up versus just rehearsal is two totally different worlds so it's just like am i gonna be able to get through this <laughs> like am i gonna be able to put some energy out there and and do the lyrics so that's that's what i was most nervous about and uh you know it's just it felt good it felt it felt natural most of all it was just fun it was fun being on stage with eric with ac and lennon and just felt good you know it didn't feel forced. It was, it was a cool show. I'm not a big fan of that venue. I wish it was at a smaller venue or a fuller show. Because it's just like that venue is real wide and just like, 
I don't like wide venues. It just allows people to do the horseshoe too much. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, to me, hardcore is floor shows. It's way cooler than being on a stage or anything like that. But, uh, you know, I was really surprised. People knew the lyrics. People started moshing and two-stepping and skanking, whatever you want to call it. And it felt awesome. It felt awesome to be back up on there. You know, watching the video, I was like, oh, they have this is like a good reaction for, you know, for a show for a new band. Uh, and, uh, you know, like the music hadn't been out there for that long, probably like a month or so before that show. So to, to see, you know, kids, uh, you know, moshing, singing along uh, for the set, I was like, oh, the, like th- this is, uh, I-, I think, uh, a-, a good first set, you know, it could definitely be a lot worse. So I- it was just fun for me to see that, you know, the, the-, the kids out there, younger kids are definitely in tune or- and paying attention to new stuff that's popping up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I don't even think the lyrics are anywhere. But I mean, you know, it was cool to see people know the lyrics and sing along a little bit and, you know, just enjoy themselves. And everybody, everybody, you know, when, when the demo dropped, had nothing but good things to say about it. So it was just really happy. I couldn't have asked for a better first show. So thanks to Bob for putting us on a killer first show. It was actually supposed to, like, we were supposed to be on a bunch of first shows, but it was just like, it, it's just like it would have been too much of a rush and i was like happy that we were able to drop the demo and then like people can kind of absorb it and take it in and and then like to not have it out and play a first show which is also kind of punk rock to do that but, like just play a show not have any music released or anything but i did that once before with, with when i played in carry by six we hadn't even dropped the demo when we played up in up in wilkes bear and that was my very first show ever. And it was just weird. You know, nobody knew. The lyrics. Yeah. People just staring at you. And I was like, Oh my God, this is so awkward. Oh, no. Okay. And I am curious, uh, you know, the, the live set, you guys played the, the comp song that you mentioned earlier. You mentioned that it was a, a, a diss track. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and can you talk about who's it aimed at or, or is it you just don't want to give them that shine I'm, I'm just curious because i that's the only because i've heard the song so i'm looking forward to hearing like the recorded version i'm not going to say any names because he's been well behaved but he knows who he is it's just you know uh a lot of times in hardcore people get involved in the party scene like a little bit too much and you know uh oftentimes more than enough uh, people's personalities just become about getting drunk and being the party guy and trying to be the life of the party or whatever, but just being a goofball, me saying goofball, you could probably figure out who it is from that. But, uh, yeah, it just, it was just like, I caught him talking shit and just running his mouth. The people who are friends to me and, you know, I, I told him from the beginning, I was like, yo, you, you ever disrespect me, this, this is going to happen. And it did. And it happened. And it was just like, just something I had to get off my chest. And hopefully it's a lasting reminder for them that they fucking, they know, they know not to fuck with me. They know not to fuck with my friends or disrespect me. Um, and to not take hardcore lightly because it can be gone in, in the blink of an eye and all the people that fuck with you can be all gone too just because you want to drink and not be loyal to your friends you like you fucking you know who give you a livelihood put food on your plate a roof over your head and that's pretty much what it's about it's like you know plain and simple I love that there's like real lore behind it because sometimes I'll, I'll yeah. listen to hardcore and I'm like, I wonder if there's any real meaning behind it or if this is just shit that sounds cool, but it's cool to know that when that no, song this, comes this out. Is, this is a real deal situation that happened. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Hell yeah. No, I, I, I enjoy that. You know, uh, it makes it e- even more real, like straight up, like actual hardcore talking about some real shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like it, all the songs that I like, what, I first started writing songs for Sudden Demise. They were fucking like, 
they were they were really angry and like really pissed off and I kind of like looked at it as like there's a lot of young hardcore kids in the scene and it's like my time when I grew up as as a and like all the things that I went through were was so long ago I don't even think kids can like really wrap their mind around those types of things because like I'm not saying it doesn't happen to young kids anymore but I just don't think kids can really fully understand it and it's like I just wanted to write lyrics that kids could fully understand and like get behind and relate to because like a lot of stuff that I was writing about I don't think they could really relate to it and that's the most important part of hardcore is just writing stuff that people can relate to and you know it just just kind of makes uh, like somebody can kind of like uh, spin it into their own thing or just whatever you know so that's just kind of kind of what I was shooting for when I was writing side of my lyrics and it How'd you guys land with this uh, Mike Tyson uh, sample in the intro? Well, that was like just kind of like I'm getting older, and it's like I've always been a huge Mike Tyson fan my whole entire life. And it's like, uh, if you like know my background uh, between playing ice hockey and just like being a wild kid, like uh, I've been getting into fights my whole entire life. You know, between like just being a kid and fucking, you know, I, I was an only child and I always hung around older dudes and I was just kind of taught, you know, my dad, he's, he was an older guy, you know, he was raised in South Philly and it was just, you fight, like you, you got a problem. doesn't matter if it's with your friends or a stranger, you know, you shoot the fair one. And, you know, uh, I did like a little bit of training and more time, but I've just always had this fascination with Mike Tyson because, you know, I learned about his upbringing and it uh, it kind of resonated with me because I was kind of raised the same way. And it's just, you can always, whenever you hear Mike Tyson talk about his life, you can always hear and feel the pain in his voice. And it's, it's very real. And, uh, you know, getting older, you know, you got to fo- focus on life and like moving past all the things. And it's just, I remember like, when when I heard that interview that we took the sample from, like I started crying because I was like, I was like, man, that that feeling is me because like I I want to be wild, like I want to be fucking, I want to be that fucking maniac demon. But I was like, you know, I gotta work on myself if I want to go any further in life. I can't be doing that. Like I gotta work on being a good person and like being a good example to other people, or the younger kids, especially in the hardcore scene. Like I can't, I can't. Know, if I want to have a, a relationship with a girl, like I can't, can't do these things. But it's like I miss it. I fucking miss being that maniac. I miss it so much. It's just, it's in me. I will fucking. It, it sounds corny saying, but it's like I will fight anytime. <laughs> I was just like, that's why I love hockey so much. There's the thrill. It's like there's no better feeling than getting punched in the face and returning returning the punches and beating somebody or even if you do lose it's like you gave it your all like so it's like when i heard that mike tyson sample it's like i fucking started to well up because like damn that's exactly how i feel i had no idea that there was so much meaning by it and i I feel like i'm gonna appreciate that intro a lot more now after hearing you speak about it yeah and it's like kind of it kind of went kind of like the way we had it, Eric wanted to put it right after the uh, right after the intro. It was supposed to be paired up with with uh, you know the subtitle track, and like because it kind of flows with the lyrics a little bit. But like, that's like I, I, I was like I'm not real big on samples, but with a short demo and and fast songs, you know, having like a little sample in there kind of kind of break you know gives it like a little bit more. But yeah, this. There's some meaning to it. like every everything I wrote about the songs like it's genuine meaning. Like, all shit that I've been through in my life or something that I've wanted to do or shit that I wish people told me when I was younger. So you know, it's 
real deal. <laughs> it's, it's not bullshit. And I, I'm really curious your thoughts on this Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight that's supposed to happen later this year. Cause it got rescheduled. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's definitely a gimmick. Uh, Jake Paul, not to take anything away from him. He's an athlete. The guy's training. Mm-hmm. Like, people don't like, uh, if you've ever stepped in a ring just to do it, like just to go round, you, ha- you have to be a trained athlete. Like even even at the pace that they're fighting, like it takes a lot of training. It's I, I tell people all the time, it's like, oh, you think you're a fucking tough guy? Get in that fucking ring, put on the gloves, spar for thirty seconds. I'll see you spar for thirty seconds, just returning punches, protecting yourself, and if you can last, then you can talk like a little bit of shit. But if you can't last, like, so it's like you know, not to take anything away from him, but. I am Mike Tyson is one of the greatest fighters of all time. 100%. Even at, even at 60 years old, almost 60 years old. I mean, he's, he's an animal. You know, he connects once. I, I don't think Jake Paul's never, he won't even know he got hit, number one. Number two, it's just, he's never going to, he's never going to get punched that hard ever again. Yeah. Like, that's it. So it's like, I, I got personally like I don't really care about that stuff too much. <clears throat> it's a money, you know, it's a cash grab. I hope Mike Tyson gets paid fucking handsomely, eventually, because I mean the guy deserves it. He's he's to me like one of the last greatest boxers of our time, of like modern day boxing, you know. Yeah. And, uh, because he's like a cultural icon, right? To to have the impact because he's he's more famous than boxing, right? He he's burst out of the boxing bubble. Yeah, I mean he's 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 more relevant than boxing now. You know, boxing has like kind of faded into the background because of MMA and mm-hmm. and mixed martial arts and you know jujitsu and everything like that. You know, but Mike Tyson still remains Mike Tyson. He's he's a legend. He's to me, he's fucking he's he's an inspiration. You know. 100 percent. yeah no I'm, I'm definitely a fan the one thing that i was most excited about was just to watch live sports on netflix right because this is like a new thing that they're going to be doing so i was like yeah. okay this is cool i, I want to see how it goes because like you know like i have a netflix account i i know everyone i know pretty much has a netflix account so it's like this seems like a no-brainer i'm surprised it's taking this long to happen yeah i mean it's crazy because the last mike tyson fight i, I watched or i all his fights used to be on pay per view, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like to me, it, it, it's just like the thing. I was like, when I saw it was on Netflix, I was like, Jesus Christ, it's fucking weird. But you know, we'll see. We'll see if it even happens. You know, if I'm being honest, I don't think it happens because I don't think Jake Paul wins his next fight because he got matched up against uh, Mike Perry, who's a former UFC fighter. He's a BKFC like champion. So, yeah. yeah, I don't think Jake Paul wins his next fight. So I, I, I don't even think it's going to happen if I'm being honest. You know, I, I really want somebody to just beat his ass. Like, a, like I want to put him in a ring with a guy who's, who hasn't fallen out of his training regiment that is currently fighting. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, like he would never do it because it's just like he knows he's going to. Well, well, no, th- that's this fight because Mike, Mike, oh, that's this fight. That's this fight, Mike. Like, you, you got to go look at Mike Perry bare knuckle because he's he's this crazy because like he had like an OK UFC run, but then he went to bare knuckle, uh, you know, uh, fighting and he's just had this resurgence. He's knocking out, uh, you know, former UFC champions. He's knocking out, uh, you know, everybody that stepped in the ring with him. And he's still he's not some like over the hill older guy. No, this is this is like the guy that uh, is going to you know give Jake Paul an actual fight and not yeah. uh, who's over the hill. Who's not, you know, secretly taking an extra paycheck to take a dive, which I, I honestly so think has he, happened. But yeah, he has not fallen out of fighting shape at all. Then. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is uh, this seems like a mistake, but um, who knows? I, I think this is going to be the one where he gets like seriously hurt. You know, what? Then maybe I'll watch this fight then because I, yeah, I'll definitely watch it because I would love to see him take an ass weapon. Yeah, 
same here because th- this is a guy that doesn't need money right he's he's making really good money so he, he he's doing it to actually beat up jake paul he's not doing it because he needs a paycheck like this guy th- this guy didn't need to take jake paul uh you know uh, th- or this jake paul fight to, to to make money he was doing really good and he's still doing really good because he, he's 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 still uh, with bkfc this is just like a one-off that they're letting him do yeah i do I, I hope he's like slipping these guys to like a little bit extra cash because i mean I, as we know, it's like UFC fighters, they don't make a whole lot of money unless you become an absolute champ. You're not making, there's, for what they're doing to themselves, they're not making a lot of money. Yeah. You know, it, they're making, they're making money on, on like, on the, if, if they open up a gym or, you know, endorsements and everything like that. But I mean, like, it's still, it's like, these guys are fucking training to just be animals. That's it. Because they're just, just they're wolves, you know. Yeah, it, it was really like a bummer to hear. It's like, oh, like I'm fighting Jake Paul. This is more than I've made on this one fight than my entire UFC career. And like, this is like coming from like you know like a former champion and like Tyron Woodley, and it's just like, geez, like that is that is insane. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope that I hope these guys are making a shit ton of money fighting them. Um. Okay, and. Going back to sudden demise, I'm uh, just curious about uh, stand up and fight because it's still I, I I you know told you previously that 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 was my favorite track and it still is my favorite track, uh, mm-hmm. but you know watching your live set and uh, you know hearing you you know give a little speech about the people who came before you, uh, you know help pave the way you know for you to be able to you know be in a hardcore band be be involved in the scene. I, I'm just really curious about you know what that song means to you. Um, it was just like, you know, all the old Philly heads, you know, Philly in the nineties used to be like the wild west, like center city. And like, Hey, it's still Philadelphia still is the wild west. It's still nuts. But like, uh, you know, to me, it's just the old school way. It's just like you, you run around in your neighborhood or you go through somebody else's neighborhood and you'd get into a fight and you know, uh, maybe somebody from another neighborhood did something dirty to one of your guys. So you just kind of, you, you did what you had to do. And that's always been, if you're from Philly or if you spent a long time in Philly, you know, that's how it goes. And it's just like, just the mentality of just like standing up for, for who you are, or like what you believe in. And it's just, you know, to me, like with all these kids, it's just like internet shit talking. You know, you come to Philadelphia and you talk shit, you're gonna get fucking smacked. Like, <laughs> like especially with how many people are moving to Philadelphia, it just kind of. I kind of wanted to write like a like a negative approach song. Like it's just kind of where it came from, but it's just like I wanted to like kind of pay homage to to Joe. That's like Concrete Warriors with Hearts Made of Gold. It's like Joe and uh, Jay Bush, you know, they're kind of like my old heads and like they've always looked out for me. And like those guys have fucking, they've been fighting in the streets their whole entire lives and kind of fucking paved the way of fucking uh, of people knowing that there's a bunch of maniacs in the Philly hardcore scene that fucking, you know, they're, they go to shows. It doesn't matter where they are. They're going to be themselves and they're going to fucking, they're going to try and fight you if you disrespect them or if you have, be weird to them. So, you know, I just kind of wanted to pay respects to those guys, to, uh, to Bushy, to all the older guys, you know, the pagan baby guys, the punishment guys. Like, you know, they would just, they paved the road for me. So it was kind of, I, I wanted kids to know. We wouldn't be here without them. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely really important to always give respect to the people who came before, especially the people who, you know, put in a lot of the work to, you know, help, you know, keep the scene alive and to kind of instill that in like the future generations of hardcore. It's like, hey, like you might be new here, but you should probably know the history on how we were able to get to this point. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I noticed on social media, there's really no like sudden demise social media presence 
yeah. is there a reason for that? Because uh, I, you know, people uh, might not even know, like, oh, like, like, what's up with this band? Where are they? Like, uh, I, I feel like it would be a, a useful tool, but I, I could get why people wouldn't want to do it. Uh, like I said, is like I wanted to do sudden demise purely just for my love of hardcore. It wasn't to fucking like uh try and we're not like we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're just kind of taking back, like taking it back to the roots and like kind of showing respect to like all the older bands that that fucking wrote shit before us. And it's just like. I'm so sick and tired of fucking seeing like merch drops every week or just like, you know, to me, I just wanted to fucking go to shows, play shows. I don't care about merch. Like, I don't like we're, we might never do merch. <laughs> sudden, sudden demise might never do merch. If we do, it might be like a hat and we're just going to give them out to the homies. It's like it, we are just meant to be like a band that plays Philly shows or, you know, like, uh, you know, if say fucking, uh, Michael Smith wants us to come out and play Long Island, we'll play out Long Island. Like we'll play Boston. Uh, you know, if a kid wants us to come out and play like a floor show out in East Bumblefuck and he seems like a legit dude, we'll come out and we'll do it. We'll play your fucking Bumblefuck show. But it's just like, I think people get so absorbed or, you know, it gets so like wrapped up in like, merch designs and everything like that. Like number one is like, there's only so many people that do merch. And it's like, I've gotten to the point where it's like, I'm just going to buy an iPad and I'm just going to start designing my own shit. If we ever do it. And it's like, cause like everybody's so busy. I hate asking people for things. And like part of hardcore is just doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if we're going to do sudden on my shit, uh, maybe it's like a close friend to us who will do a design for us or like, Lennon will fucking do a design. I'll fucking figure out a design. Eric has awful taste in everything, so he's never going to do a design. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Eric. I'm kidding. I love you. But, um, yeah, you know, it's just like, it's not the emphasis. There's too much emphasis on, like, merch and shit like that. We're just real deal hardcore. We're here to fucking play hardcore, have fun, show up in your city. Play fast, play loud, and then get the fuck out. Okay, I as a fan, I'm a little bit sad because I I, I I was gonna get there because uh, you know you guys have played two shows and I, I was curious. I had like to this point, I've never seen a piece of merch, so that explains why I haven't. But I totally get it, yeah, because. Uh, I have too many shirts to begin with, right? There's shirts that I, I own that I still haven't even worn, so I, I I'm I'm a, I, I could survive without buying any more hardcore merch, but it's just I, I feel like it, it, that's part of like the like the whole system for me is like I, I show up, uh, I I you know nine times of the time I won't buy a record because I, I just don't really collect records, so I'll I'll buy the T-shirt or I'll buy the CD, whatever, um, but uh, but but I don't even need it, but I just do it because I because I I want to support if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's like if if kids want to show a way to support sudden demise, you show up in the pit, you, you skank, you mosh side to side, not that fucking back of the pit, ninja kick, karate bullshit. Come up front, you sing along, side to side mosh, skank, have fun. That's it. That's that's how I want your support. That's it. I don't want anything more than that. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully they hear the message and they comply. Uh but I'm just really curious. Do you guys have any shows lined up? Because you did play that second show with like Dimension Six. But uh, other than that, it's like I haven't seen anything. Yeah, we we have a show lined up in September. I can't say it's going to be at the church. It's going to be a big show. Okay. Um, we're opening it. I can't I can't say yet who it is, but it's like Lennon's in Europe. He's getting ready to go to Europe. Um. And just everybody's so busy with the summer. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got their, their wives and, and like other shit going on. And like, you know, sudden demise is kind of low on the priority list. I'm super busy with work at the moment. So it's just like, we got a couple show offers and, uh, I was just like, I just kind of want to keep it the core group, you know, uh, AC, Lennon, Eric. I, like, I don't want to like do, you know, and like Stucky, if he wants to play. Like I don't, I don't want to like 
keep on constantly bringing in villains to fucking to play. Like I don't, I, like I don't really feel the need to do it. So it's just like, let's just put it on pause for the summertime, and then like once the fall comes and things calm down a little bit, we'll we'll get back out there. So uh, look for it'll be it'll be end of September. I think if the show is September twenty third at the church, it's gonna be a banger. It's gonna sell out. I can tell you that. Okay. So it's 100% going to sell out. Um, but if you want to come see us or you want to go to that show, hit one of us up and we'll make sure you get in anyway. Um, you know, but uh, September, and then we're just going to kind of work from there on out. Not really. There really is no agenda to this band. It's just play hardcore when we, when we want and when it's, but it seems right. Hey, I I like that because now people get a chance to to miss you, right? N- nothing really going on in the summer, but then when you come back end of September, uh, I'm sure people will definitely pop out and want to support you even more because they know that this isn't like super full time and that you guys just kind of are you know going with the flow right now. Okay. Uh, can you talk about your, your, your birthday show that, that you mentioned earlier? Is, is that something you can talk about or is, there, is it too early for that? Uh, yeah, I'll say it now because the, the, the lineup's solid. It's it's 100% locked in. Um, it's going to be Missy Link, Moment of Truth, uh, Nothing But Enemies, Final Resting Place, and uh, Last Man Out at Bonks, September 28th. And it's just, it's going to be, uh, I said, Bob, I want to book, I like, I want to do this show at Bonks. He's like, I, I leave the, the shows to the, to those, to those guys. It's like, Bob, I want to do a birthday show. And it's like, and it's like, I don't, I don't want to play my birthday show. I want to fucking have fun and mosh and mm-hmm. enjoy myself. So, and I like, I just wanted to be an ass beater. And like Mike, right. Mick Ryan is one of my close friends and I love missing link. I love final resting place. i fucking love moment of truth and uh you know i was like i want to do it at bonks i want it to be like a you know an intimate setting everybody can like there's plenty of space to hang out and just shoot the shit so it was just like the the one band that what that i wanted to play is like we might be working on one other band uh i don't know i don't know if it's gonna work out it's gonna be like a secret set deal so it's like if you want to know, it's going to be an ass beater. That's a that whole entire lineup is ass beaters. Okay. And and th- I, th- this is a, a public show. So anybody can show up. Yeah. Anybody can show up. Okay. Anybody can show up. It's if you're fucking you want to bring your little brother, your little sister, you can bring them, put them on your shoulders, watch everybody get their asses kicked in the pit. They're in missing link and final resting place and everything like that. Anybody can show up. Um, it's just a basic show. It's just like, I, I wanted that book. You know, I wanted to put together an ass beater lineup and, and Bob did it for me. So thank you very much, Bob. I appreciate you. Yeah. Great lineup. Yeah. That new missing link record. Great record. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. It's changed the scape of heavy hardcore in my eyes. It's like, that's the, that's, it's like, you know, it's going to be like along the lines of like, like when hundred demons first came out, like, that just kind of changed the game a little bit, you know? Yeah. And I'm happy to see them, you know, kind of hitting the road, right? They, they put out the new record, right? They're overseas. Mm-hmm. They're coming to California, which I'm, I'm driving to San Diego to, to, to see them, uh, because like the, they have a, a, a show in the Valley, but that's kind of far and San Diego is kind of far. So I'm kind of in the middle. So I'm like, all right, let me go down to San Diego. I haven't been there in a minute. So like, that's how much I like, like that new record. like, I'm actually like going way out of my way to, definitely catch them live when they're coming to california it, it, and it's like the album is fucking phenomenal and on top of that they're so dialed in live right now like, they sound so good i mean with three guitars a bassist and a drummer it's just like when they played salties they sounded fucking unreal for that tiny ass room um yeah they're they got it going on right now It'll be worth the drive to San Diego. 
Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, because I, I last saw them at uh, LDB. That was the last time I saw them, uh, and th- they were sick. But this was before the new record, so now I'm just like, all right, I want to know what it's like, you know, now that the new stuff's out, because yeah, it's it, it's insane. Yeah, shout out to Mike Ryan for putting us in that uh, <laughs> in the fucking eat the little sudden to my shout out in that one song, fucking uh, the New York Minute. You guys are getting popular. Yeah, you know, I I, I tell everybody like what, 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 these days when anybody asks me like what am I listening to, I'm like, you got to be listening to Sudden Demise. That's like that's the first band that I name because I, I just want to make sure every, everybody's tapped in because it's it's Thank seriously you. like I, I'm not lying. I, I'm not saying it just because you're here, but it's like yeah, like like that demo. I, I'm just so drawn to it. So like that, that like you know when I'm like All right, I want to listen to to some hardcore. That's like one of the first things that I put on these days. I appreciate that so much. Okay, and uh, you know you, you did mention uh, you know you guys just kind of going with the flow. Uh, you have this comp song uh, coming out. Um, mm-hmm. Are you even thinking about uh, new music? Are you like uh, you know storing lyrics, or are you just uh, waiting? I talked. I talked to Eric. I said like I want to start writing soon. Might as well use the rest of the summer. And uh, you know we kind of. I know where I want to go as, as far as like, uh, as like writing and like the sound of this band. Like I know exactly what, I, what I want to do with it and like the direction I wanted to head as far as sound. I just want to, I want to strip it down even more and be like cut out like any type of filler and just like in your face minute long songs minute 15 second songs and just like just like a whirlwind of just pissed off straight up hardcore but like with that you know kind of like like you know negative approach like youth of today like just like everything just jumbled up all in one that everybody can enjoy just real old school influence hardcore you know yeah no i i I love that just just straight to the point Right. So you got to just, uh, you know, w- when you're seeing it live, you got to enjoy it while it's happening because, you know, uh, it can, you know, go right past you. But uh, I-, I definitely dig it. Well, I'm a huge fan. I, I hope everybody, uh, you know, anybody who's gotten to this point, obviously, I, I hope they're tuned in uh, with Sudden Demise by now. But I- I'm just curious, um, you know, what are, you know, some newer bands that you're listening to from your area that you think people should be, you know, probably. Uh, checking out i mean like if you haven't listened to discontent yet the delaware boys or you know uh david from from killing me and andrew and uh what's his name i mean, like them disguise the from new jersey they're killing it it's pretty much uh reaching out it's all the kids from reaching out that are in that um uh, no idols they're sick yeah that's cool demo. Zach, yeah. yeah, Zach is in that. Um, Terminator. Terminator, I just saw them finally at uh, at Photo Club. They're from Canada. They're fucking sick. Uh, if you like younger kids, like if you're into looking for just straight up hardcore, listen to Stigmatism. I finally got to see them live. And I was like kind of on the fence about them because like, you know, it was like kind of... If you like AF, uh, you know, United Blood, Victim in Pain style of stuff, those guys got it dialed in. Um, trying to think who else at the moment. Uh, oh, Bad Beat. If you like fast hardcore, Bad Beat, definitely. Lennon's other band, Base the Pain. Posi, like you know, posy kind of. Well, they're not exactly posy. Like they're definitely uh, uh, youth crew inspired. Like Four mm-hmm. Punch, that's sick, and it's got everybody's you know favorite band members in it. Um, what else? There's another band from Detroit uh, called Off the Wall. Uh, Critter, the singer from Annie Up, did like a like he's doing like a side band with like dudes from Bad Beat, which is like. It's like a total, it's a total 180 from Annie up and it's just fast, straight up hardcore, kind of like, uh, 
it sounds like death threat lyrics over over like floor punch it's kind of it's kind of cool so check out off the wall I think who else every time somebody asks me this I always draw blanks um that's pretty much it I listen to so much old hardcore like if, if like if my, if my cassette player in my truck is generally leeway <laughs> or or youth of today cranking in there so it's like you know, if you got fucking tapes, kids, hook me up with your tapes. I'm always willing to buy them. So bring them to Bonks. I'll buy them off you. I'm always at the door. Um, you know, you got some cool shit. Stop trying to stop writing like double pedal hardcore. It's, it's over. We're bringing back straight up hardcore. It's back. No diss to it or anything like that. Just stop trying to write it. Get back if you if your drummer doesn't know how to play a single pedal properly, you can't play a double pedal. So let's start off with fast single pedal hardcore, and then and then we'll work your way back up to the tough guy double pedal hardcore. All right, I, I can get behind that. Um, but Zach, I definitely appreciate your time today. This was definitely a treat for me because, like I said, yeah, like I, I said in demise. Uh, probably my most listened to hardcore thing this year, but I, I really appreciate your time. But before we go, is there anything else you would like to say? Uh, just if you're, if you're new to the hardcore scene, just, you know, and you're, you're liking all this, but like, you know, you don't know a way to get involved. Uh, just find something, even if it's something little, just like as, as much as just showing up and moshing to every band, that's a huge part of hardcore. That's the most important part of hardcore because hardcore is a participation thing and it takes everybody to be involved to do it. So don't, don't ever feel like your, like your opinion doesn't matter. If you think it doesn't matter, then prove people wrong. Go out and fucking show people why it matters to you, whether it's writing a zine, starting a band, uh, you know, anything. Anything, like, if you're passionate about it, do it yourself, make it happen, because nobody's going to do it for you. So uh, that's really it. Just keep going it. All right. Well, I definitely appreciate your time today. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for doing the podcast. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll be back soon. Goodbye. All right. See you, Jamie.